Okay. We're live. It's up and running. For YouTube. The time. Yes. YouTube. YouTube. Let me know if you can hear me, YouTube. Drop it in the comments. I want to make sure you guys... I want to make sure you guys can hear us and also see us here on YouTube uh, because the tech guy is out of the office. Everyone knows that the firstborn gets all of the best genetics. He gets all of the best strength, brains, attributes, all the way around. The second born is always the more sickly, kind of peevish. Peevish? Uh, <laughs> kind of peevish. Uh, so, Blake is down. And so, guess what, YouTube? I have come in here and set all of this production crap up for you guys. Yes, I have done it. Okay? It's not my job to do it. But I have never missed a, sing a single training evolution. I've never missed a single anything. And you know what, man? When people don't want to do their job, you know what I do? I just come and do their job for them. Okay? Uh, so I want to make sure that y'all can hear me on here to make sure I did this right. Can they hear me, boo? Yeah, and I just want to say that Blake is really sick, and he's trying not to get us sick, and that's why he's not here. And no, he, he just doesn't want to you, work today. You don't want him here because he's got Rona. No, he just okay. We're about to call. Okay, I'm about <laughs> to call Blake. Okay, look, Blake has this. Uh, been, he's got this new coronavirus. It's called the Megalacron. <laughs> the Megalacron variant. <laughs> okay, he's one of the first people that's gotten it. <laughs> Came straight from the dinosaurs, didn't it? Yeah, it's it's. Have you ever heard of a? Uh, I'm assuming they named this after a megalodon shark. Um, it's named after Megatron, the transformer. Well, yeah, wasn't the other one Omnicron? Yeah, because the, the coronavirus tra transformer. Hey, somebody turn up the the Bluetooth. Whoa, turn up the Bluetooth volume on that screen board right there. Uh oh, this is. Hold on. Is that Bluetooth? No, it's not oh. Oh. Yeah, come on, guys. All right, let's see. If I this turned works her up here. now. How about that? Okay, we got him now. Blake has come down. He's one of the first people in America to come down with the megalocron coronavirus variant. So uh we got Blake on the line here. Hello, Blake. Hi. So can you talk to us about the symptoms of this new megalocron variant? Well. Uh, I try my best. <laughs> really, get makes you real winded. <laughs> it's hard for me to get many words out. So but, uh, the megalocron is is this fa it's affecting your lungs too. Tremendously. <laughs> okay. <laughs> hold on. Hold on a second. <sighs> yeah. Dang, that sounds bad. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm able. I'm able to make it to the bathroom, <laughs> but it's really, hold on. All I can do is just to wipe my butt. Well, I've also heard the megalocron, megalocron <laughs> variant actually is, makes you feel like a Chinese person too. Are you feeling any of those symptoms? Are you starting to feel like a Chinese? Are you starting to feel like speaking in Chinese or anything? Well, <laughs> I hadn't noticed it, Chad, but, uh, <laughs> but now that you mentioned <laughs> thing, thing well, it's going. already started. I saw him. It's already started. I knew it was starting because I just... <laughs> I just, <laughs> I just FaceTimed him a minute ago, and I noticed his eyes were starting to get slanted. Oh, his eyes are starting to get like like um, Asian eyes. Well, Chad, the, I'm starting to look like a catfish. Yep. <laughs> My mustache is getting real, real thin. <laughs> real thin. Yeah. 
like a like a He's Chinaman. It's thinner than it's than it's than it's already been. He said his mustache is starting to thin out, Chili, like oh, a Chinaman. I, I hear him. Okay, you can hear him. <laughs> yeah, I hear him. Okay. Um, this is this oh. isn't good, man, because uh, the Megalocron variant. You know, you start to become, first of all, you have all these symptoms. Blake has just told us it is affecting his respiratory system. Uh, he is starting to actually become Chinese. Uh, he's starting to support uh, and and really like talk about communism and stuff like it's a good thing. Um what else did he say is going on with him? His mustache is, is thinning out. Uh, uh, well, I, I'm only five foot five now. <laughs> <laughs> You're shrinking too. Are you craving rice? Oh, every night. Yep. All right. You got all the symptoms. I know you've already been, uh, you've already got the positive Megalocron test. So we know we're talking to somebody with a confirmed case of Megalocron. And uh, we just want to let you know that we think you're a turd for not being here to do your job this morning. Can, can I tell y'all what somebody commented? His new name is Something Wong. <laughs> <laughs> Some, uh, something Wong. <laughs> do you get it? Uh, Thanks, Petro. You guys are so funny. <laughs> Well, all right, Blake. Well, we, we hope you get to feeling better, man. I just wanted to get uh, a live in-person report on the symptoms of this Megalocron variant. So you have it here, well, folks. I appreciate you calling. Um, you're a real douchebag. And <laughs> just, I hope everything technically goes wrong today for you. Hey. <laughs> Whoa. All right, you pussilophagus. <laughs> See, I ha I have the control. I'm 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 freaking cutting you off, Blake. Yep, he's gone. <laughs> uh, so there you guys have it. First, uh, if you haven't heard it on mainstream media yet, it's be probably because they don't know this stuff. Uh, you heard it here first on the Three or Seven podcast. The new Megalocron coronavirus variant is out, and we suggest that you avoid it. Crazy symptoms. You know, you guys thought losing your taste and your smell was bad. Wait till you start morphing into a Chinaman. And that's irreversible. You know, a lot of people, their taste and their smell never came back. Well, Blake's going to be walking around the rest of his life looking like a Chinese now. <laughs> and there's nothing he can do about it. So you heard it here on the 307 podcast first. Uh, you know, you better put your daggone mask on, man. You better social distance. Megalocron is no joke. What do you guys got on this? I take some metal masks, son, for the Megalocron. You got to have that. You got to have a metal mask? AR 400 minimum. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. That thick boy. You know what I mean? Dang it's it. It's a shield, uh, a metal shield. That's right. that's right. I didn't even think about that, man. Yeah. Yeah, Megalocron can penetrate right through any other mask. Yeah. Is it Megalocron? No, or Megalocron. Did it change? No, yeah. it's always been Megalocron. I feel like I had a T earlier. It changed just like Blake did. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I'm worried by Friday he's not even going to be speaking English anymore. <laughs> That's going to be a problem. Remains to be seen. You don't, Do you know what language he would probably be speaking? Mandarin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's the most common side effect of Megalocron. Well, uh, no. all right. I don't know, man. It seemed like you know all this. I do know it all. I dang sure don't want to be no Chinaman. You've been, yeah. you, you've been researching this? Uh, well, I have some inside information. Yeah, I've got some people in China that are letting me know what's going on. Well, they're actually experiencing... Uh, they're actually experimenting right now with a new variant. They already released Megalocron. So the next one they're actually experimenting with has a 100% kill rate. It attacks the brain. So I have people on the inside that are telling me this stuff. What's that variant going to be called? <clears throat> That's yet to be determined. It's not been fully developed. It's not ready for release. Yeah. yeah. They'll name it before... 
the release date comes out. You'll hear it first here on Three to Seven Podcast. So where people come to get all their medical advice. Yeah, well, well, where people come to get the latest breaking news. This is the place. That's why we live stream the podcast. <laughs> That's why it's a, we we don't pre record the po- the podcast because we want you to have the latest breaking news starting today starting today blake's in here on the chat yeah. typing up chinese words i can't read <laughs> <laughs> on youtube it's bad uh, man thanks it's he's real funny. bad <laughs> uh what's up with you chill y'all got snowed in huh yeah up there at the uh yeah you showed up this morning your freaking mazda was frozen <laughs> <laughs> yeah man i don't uh the snow's odd because it's like rain, but it's uh, it's different. Yeah. All right, Theo. <laughs> well, it's uh, I mean it's we don't get snow. No, I didn't. I didn't sign up for this crap. So then, then it starts snowing, and it's like it's raining, but it's it's hard rain. It, then it covers all your mess, and then you can't get to. Well, you need to go as, as well. I don't. Uh, so is this a result of global warming? Well, that's a good question because. Cause I got up this morning, dude, it's freaking nine degrees, man. That's, I don't. I live in Georgia, so I don't have to deal with nine degrees. Is this global warming? Well, yeah, because see what you don't understand about about climate. <clears throat> you know, you you're just. You look at weather, you know, and you just think that's just all this and that and there's nothing to the story and you don't look at the whole climate patterns you know what i'm talking about you ever heard of that al gore climate patterns huh what no (laughs) so what you see when you see nine degrees you go man it's cold outside how is there global warming what you what you're missing though what you're missing is where that where that cold came from this cold came from the ground Okay. You understand? Not the atmosphere. Atmosphere is heating up. Okay. So the ground, the cold comes <laughs> from the center of the earth. So you know how it's real cold right now? That's some real old stuff coming up. This cold has been there for... That's some old stock. Area. I don't know how long. Some, I'm talking about it's a long time. The cold you're that's feeling, why it's so cold. The dude. cold you're feeling right now is old. Old. Holy crap. Dude. You're talking there. like thousands of I'm years? talking like old. And you know what it's getting replaced with? What? Hot. Ooh. That's why we're heating up. So is the... Okay. The atmosphere is heating up. Right. And then it's also the... the it's bringing that cold cold in the depths of the earth to the surface. Then there ain't going to uh, be no cold left. Okay. I see what you're saying. So because the atmosphere is heating up... Yep. It's drawing the cold out of the yep. Earth's core, and then bingo. Okay, and then once all the cold's drawn out of the Earth's core, then there ain't gonna be no cold left because the cold. Okay, so you're telling me the cold has always been rising from the surface of the Earth, but it's just been a slow release. Is that right? That's what I'm telling you. Holy smokes, dude! What you gonna do when no colds left? It's going to get hot. It's going to get hot. Well, they've been, been trying to tell you for years. I heard, this reminds me, of, <laughs> I heard the other day that you have a limited number of farts before you die. <laughs> and it, before, like when you're born, that number is set. It's like. I do not believe that, man. When you run out of cold is like when you run out of farts. I think you're talking about heartbeats, boo-boo, not farts. No, it was farts. I'm going to go and tell you, I let one in the gym today that should have counted for 10. On. <laughs> I think I, I think I got 10 in one <laughs> at the gym today. Oh, oh. I, son. I, I warned every... <laughs> you were near him? Oh, yeah. I was right side him. <laughs> what Next station. I that that wasn't even the bad one, though. The one I smelled, smelled like he had ate possum guts <laughs> for breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. it ate straight raw possum guts. Didn't you have a bunch of poor women working out around you, Boo? Not poor women. I had a bunch of strong women I'm working out around. Poor me. because they had to smell. No, so the I don't. I think cornbread's the only one that smelled that first weak one. The second one was really elongated and wet. <laughs> and I warned everyone in the gym 
verbally did i not yeah. i said look y'all don't come over here people <laughs> like people were walking my way and i had to stop them i said y'all don't come over here didn't i corn yeah yeah he did it was that bad <laughs> yeah, and then he took his shirt off <laughs> uh, you ain't never had your fart get stuck in your shirt no I, i'm that's what i'm saying i think that's why it did. Yeah. <laughs> he started airing out publicly <laughs> Well, then we're eating breakfast this morning after after PT, and these guys, chili and corn, are telling me that I still smell like a fart, and I didn't, and I haven't even farted again since then. Still got that beard, son. Yeah. So somehow I must have been uh. farting on myself all night last night. <laughs> boo boo, is something in that salmon? I think it's the onions. I but think but you didn't put a lot of onions on mine last night. It's something in that sauce. Mm. What's in that sauce? Miso, Greek yogurt, and garlic. It's got to be the miso. <laughs> you don't even know what that is. Okay, this is the second time. She she fed me this salmon last week, okay? I went in the gym. Okay, I used the restroom before I left the house, and then I went to the gym, and I got to moving around a little bit, and I said, oh, yeah, I'm going to the toilet. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you, I sat down on that toilet, son, and it was bad. I'm talking about bad enough that I was wondering when is this going to end? <laughs> when is this going to be over? Like the smell or the progression of the bowel movement? That's a great which, question. Which one? <laughs> or both? It, it, the whole experience. Yeah, it was a whole experience. It, it, it was just it just went on too long. You got to be hard when it gets hard, man. Amanda said you got the Omega farts from that salmon. Yeah, well, I if that's a thing, that might be what I have because now both times I've eaten this salmon. This is some special salmon you order. Where where do you get this from, baby? Vital choice. It's a uh, king, some king salmon or something like that. Yeah, it's some special that she orders, and and it, it just ain't working for me, babe, because well, it, it hit me again this morning. When that happens to you, you got to be hard when it gets hard. You can't die on the toilet, man. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that bout I had last week, man. I'm gonna tell you. It was harder than the workout getting through that, getting through that set. You know how, when you get, you get in a hard set like that, I don't know if you've ever done it before, but you kind of get clammy, you know, you just kind of start breaking out in a, in a cold sweat, get real clammy and just weak and get chill bumps. Yeah. Yeah. It, it was, it was like one of those. <laughs> so you know, this morning wasn't quite as bad. The, the gas was real bad. The set wasn't near as bad, but it was bad. Yeah. So I, I just, I guess I just need to stick to, uh, to ribeye and, you know, beef. I need to stick with beef. Mm -hmm. Clammy on the toilet sounds pitiful. <laughs> it's, it is. <laughs> it just sounds pitiful. It is. You've never been like that, corn. When I, I I break out into a lather, <laughs> not me. <laughs> I can feel all my skin moving, rubbing together, and whatnot. What? It's a lather. It's like I'm in the, almost like I'm in the shire. <laughs> I wish I did that. I get cold and clammy, like I like I had a like I'm running a fever or something. <laughs> mm. uh, you are man. It's that cold air leaving you. Uh, Works the same way. Lord. <sighs> Welcome back to the podcast, Biscuit. Oh, everybody's you. been asking about you. Have they? Yeah, everybody's been asking where you've been. Tell the people what you've been up to, baby. They want a report. What 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 am I supposed to give you a report on? Well, if Just you have whatever's anything on your for heart. the folks at home. Yeah, people have been wondering about you. Where you been? They've been I, they've actually been worried about you. Everybody I see comments like, "Where's Brooke at? I hope she's okay." I I'm good. You you guys just kicked me off the podcast. You guys said something about since I'm a woman, I can't be a part of it anymore. And what? I've begged. Nobody said that. Y'all said that. Everybody but Corn said that. That baby, that's a pure lie. The 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 thing is, we only have four inputs on this podcast machine. So, are you trying to come on here and say we said that? <laughs> <laughs> no, y'all didn't say that. But I do think y'all could make a way for me to slide in there every once in a while. You can have my slot anytime you want to come on. No. Uh, I'm no, looking at I want to be an additional. 
I'm looking at getting a new podcasting machine that you can actually no machine. you you can run four inputs off of these mics into it, but it also connects with those little road mics that we have mm -hmm. and Bluetooth to those. Mm -hmm. And then that would allow Biscuit just to sit. She could sit anywhere in the room. Right. And just that's her microphone. That'd so, work. guys, if y'all want, if y'all like Biscuit on the podcast, look, I got to buy this new podcast machine to get her up. Drop me some daggone money in the super chat, man. Oh, no, that's terrible. Y'all want, y'all want this no. dang machine? What's wrong with you? Drop me that, some money in the super what the chat. Crap. What's wrong with you? <laughs> He's, uh, can we just I'm talk trying to raise money to get you a spot on the back on the podcast, boo boo. I mean, you're getting a little out of line here. Yeah, this is. Do you want to get back on the podcast or not? We've this is this podcast. Is, I don't know how people are still on here. The things that we've covered so far is freaking absolutely heinous. Well, I mean, you're I, I, way out of line, Bubba. I, I'm I'm <laughs> advocating for Brooke here, and and Biscuit. I asked you to give the people a report about what's been going on, and ho I was hoping you were going to give them some, you know, some valuable insight. And you just you just flopped. You just told a lie about me. <laughs> <laughs> you just flopped, so you you ain't got nothing. I can't see you. You're no, behind she's, the. She's blank. <laughs> okay, she ain't got nothing. I uh, I what I mean, you need. I don't like when you just throw it to me and don't say anything. Like, what do you want me to talk about? Well, like, have you had anything going on? <laughs> <laughs> I can't <laughs> How's the dogs been doing? Oh my gosh. Have you had anything going on? <laughs> what about the uh what about the goats? Well, one of Chad's goat is sick right now. That's probably why he's not I'm gonna all. Typical. Talk, I'm gonna he's talk about that out. in a minute. Well that's that's uh Okay. That's typical that Chad would not would just leave you with that. I'm gonna talk about that in a minute. Cornbread, leave you to take care of the. Uh, I'm, I'm shaky legs. All right, baby, you flopped. You <laughs> flopped. Now, is this it, a new thing we do? You, like where you go around the circle, at, like and you go like, give us an update on your yeah, life. Yeah, the, the like, people, is that the people do? wanted to hear about what the crap you've been doing. Look, you want to come back on the podcast? You're gonna have to do better than that. All right, before <laughs> <laughs> I am not going to spend our money. To get a machine so that you can come on the podcast. If, if, if I'm going to kick over a question to you and you provide zero value, you're going to have to do better than that. Okay? We 22 minutes in. You've been out of line four to five times. He's in, he's in a deep state of grief, so I'm going to let go. The mean things well, he's saying. I mean, man. okay. I, okay. I'm about to kick it over to cornbread. Cornbread's going to, Show you how this is done, all right? Uh, <laughs> cornbread, how has your uh, your fitness journey been coming? No, man? no, 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 no. Talk to me no, about no, your no, fitness no. journey. You can't give him a specific category. You have to say, "How's life going right now, cornbread?" Shoot, <laughs> idiot. Talk to me about your fitness journey, man. man Talk to the people about it. It's been going good. What's 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 been the challenges and what's been what's been the good and the bad so far? The challenge specifically has been in CrossFit not adding too much weight and keeping true to the form. Uh, that's been that's been the main thing is making sure I'm doing the form because I feel like I can lift more. You know what I mean? And people around mm -hmm. me is lifting more, and I'm like I can. I know I can lift that, and then I'll do a set that's lighter, and I'll be like, well, I come on my toes that time, so I need to make sure to be on my heels. So I'm, that process right there has been challenging um, in my head. I got, a, I got a little tweak with that, doing that box jump. You might laugh, but that thing freaks me out, mm -hmm. thinking about jumping on that box. The 16-inch ain't no biggie. I know I can probably jump onto the 20 just I, I look at it, man. Just freeze. Mm -hmm. Be like I'm. I'm going to step on that. Have well, you Have you jumped on it yet? No, I haven't. It'll take one time. Yeah, because you know you can too, and it just yeah. takes one time. Yeah, you know what else it takes one time to do? For you to miss that jump, <laughs> eat your shins and up. rake your shin across yeah. that box. Yeah, 
Yeah, I did that. It, it, I did that one time, mm-hmm. and it hurt so bad. No crap, I almost puked. Yeah. It hurt so bad. Well, right. you can do that on any hype box, though. Yep. Yeah. So I mean, you just gotta. Yeah. Once you get that, I mean, you'll. It'll just. You, you got to get over that corn. Yeah. You got to start jumping. So. Well, and I, I know it's, it, it sounds <laughs> it sounds weak minded, but I'm telling you. Well, no, I, I'll be some... like I'm. I'm about to. I'm about to jump over this jewel, son, <laughs> and I'll go up there and I'll be like, a step up. <laughs> I'd be like, well, how many step ups no, I got? What's on the up. fitness? No, that don't sound step up. That don't sound weak minded. Go go find anybody who thinks that's whatever, go find you a 30 inch box or a 40 inch, whatever it is for you. Yeah. And, and you ain't gonna try it either. Right. <laughs> so you, you just gotta been, keep working up. You ain't been practicing your jumps the last 10 years, man. <laughs> no, 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 I ain't been practicing my jumps. You know what I – this is what I picture myself doing. I don't know if you remember it. When we went coon hunting last year up at your place, Cooney went to jump over the creek, and when he jumped over the creek, he was upright. But when he got center of the creek, <laughs> he went to his hands and knees in midair and went, boom, <laughs> dead on the ground. That's where he lost his phone, his knife. Oh, yeah. I think I do remember that. Remember and everything. That. And I'm like, dude, I'm going to get up here and I'm going to do something goofy and I'm just going to wreck myself. <laughs> yeah, I think I do remember that. But as far as CrossFit, that's, you know, the jumping and uh, the form. The form. Yeah, just wanting to, you know, that process seems in my mind seems like it's taken, <laughs> but it's only been two months. But I feel like, man, I, I want to lift more. I know I can lift more. Yeah. Um, the changing of the diet, man, I, that protein, dude. Eating two hundred forty five grams of protein. Good lord! Yeah, it's uh. So, in tracking my macros and doing all that, what I realized is before I really like when you take the amount of food and put it in your hand throughout mm-hmm. the day. I wasn't consuming that much material. Mm-hmm. It was just really bad material, and now trying to consume good material. I feel like I'm just stuffing this stuff at a certain point, even at breakfast, just stuffing it down my throat just mm-hmm. to get it, just to get it in. Mm-hmm. So that's probably been the biggest challenge. And one, one good thing of the totality of all of it, I just got so much more energy. Like, really? I don't, that's great. I do not even want to sit down, like sit down five or 10 minutes, have a come. I'm like, well, let's go to the garage. Let's, let's go do a walk. Let's yeah. do something. So yeah. <clears throat> so you're tra- are you training twice a day? Yeah. I'm well CrossFit in the morning. And if I don't do CrossFit, then I do a body weight workout at home and then the walk I walk an hour a day. Dang, yeah. that's that's good, yeah. man. Yeah. That's real good. Yeah. Um I feel that protein, what you're talking about. Yeah. Like the just feeling like you're eating so much. Because in June, I started that, trying to hit about 160 to 170 grams of protein. And exactly, I felt like I was eating so much food. I was like, I'm going to get fat. (laughs) Like, it feels like I'm just forcing it. But I lost weight, and I feel better. Right. Just just for the people, Corn, just talk to the people real quick about the the drastic nature of the lifestyle change you've made. Just Just tell them. A little bit about your about well, your story. Well, so I mean, the majority of my life, other than when I was policing for five and a half years, I was running heavy equipment. Yep. And that that is very sedentary, extremely sedentary. So at times I'd be over three hundred pounds. The heaviest <laughs> I got was three thirty three. And you think you're strong because you're one of the biggest guys around. Mm-hmm. You know, you got to get out and, you know, take the turbo off a machine, do some mechanic, and you know what I mean? You can pick it up, hand it to somebody like it's nothing and whatnot. Well, as, so being that big, I always thought I was really strong, really strong. And I went to the police academy in 09 and lost 80 pounds and realized, well, dude, you had a lot of anchor. You know, you, a lot of that pushing and pulling was because you had 80 more pounds to push and pull with. Yeah. So so really, even for my size now, for my size now, my muscle tone, I've, you know, learned by doing CrossFit, it, and I'm not as strong as what I, I look, period. So I'd been sedentary for all those years, 
I'm talking 20 plus years, especially this last year and a half sitting in a wheel loader for 11, 12 hours a day mm. and then going home, of course, sitting there. And, and then for that big amount of period in the, amongst all that, I was an alcoholic. So drinking copious amounts of alcohol in the evening after all that, just not healthy at all, at all. So probably around 2021, yeah, 2021, I started doing some jogging, started doing some cardio. Man, I got, I was feeling great. I got up to where I could jog nine, 10 miles continuously. Why'd you start doing that? Uh, there was a race I was going to do with a buddy, a 15K. <clears throat> um, so that, that was the main reason. Why'd you decide to do a race all? I, I don't know. I mean, why'd you decide to start oh, doing fitness stuff? Anyways? I mean, listening to y'all, who y'all are, y'all my buddies, you know, and just when I went to the basic course and all the people that messaged me on Instagram, everybody was doing it. So I was surrounded by people that did that kind of thing. Thought it would be something good for me. Mm -hmm. know, thought it was cool, you know, straight up. Those were my thoughts. I was definitely going to help me get healthier be fun to do, be cool to do. So I started doing that. So when I, so when I was doing that, I started back out doing that at about 288, something like that. And I got down to about 270 and then I fractured my heel. Yeah. So to be honest with you now, I really don't even want to jog or anything till I'm about to 225. Yep. Just from the, some stuff people I've talked to and read and researched. So I fractured my heel. That was in between the time I went to the basic course. And that was one reason too, because the basic course whooped my tail. And I said, dude, you are a fat hog. You got to do something. <laughs> so after the basic course, that probably being the biggest catalyst is when I started doing that. Fractured my heel. Uh, <clears throat> laid up from that. Then went to the proven grounds. I, with your heel jacked up yeah i remember that with, yeah and then the pin with my ankle mm -hmm. yeah at the proving grounds and then after that i was like okay i'm gonna the heels healed up the pins we got that situated now i'm gonna get back to it well then all of a sudden i'm I'm at work one day the middle of the day and my heart just starts boom 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 i've felt palpitations in my heart just like everyone does mm -hmm. here and there for years. This wouldn't stop. I don't know why. I just started guzzling water like maybe I'm dehydrated. I'm I done drunk like six bottles of water and it's done went by 30 minutes. It's still doing it. At the time I didn't have a, a watch to check what it was. So I'm checking it with my fingers and I'm like, dude, my heart rate's like 110 standing here. Mm -hmm. And it go to 120. 140 and back down to 110 well, 45 minutes come along and i said well i got to do something i called a guy the supervisor i said dude something's going on with my heart i'm not in any pain don't wreck nobody just come pick me up it's good to go no more than i got off the phone with him it stopped mm. i said shoot i'm <laughs> going back to work mm -hmm. oh my gosh come so on. i went up there and got in the tractor Went back five minutes later, here it come again. He took me to the ER. We got in there. Of course, if you go in there with any heart things, they take you straight back. They did an EKG, and that dude's like, you're in AFib. I was like, okay, all right. So they took me back into the ER, and I talked to the doctor. And, you know, however it may be with anybody, like nobody likes the hospital at all. So I laid there for four or five hours, then monitoring to me. And he come in there with a beta blocker. And he said, if you take this, that AFib will stop. I thought, man, I do not. Like, I am had this gap where I'm trying to get healthy. Dude, I can jog nine miles. I know I can if you just let me get up right now. He's like, you at this moment in your life, you're five times more likely to have a stroke. Now, what I can't remember what the scale was mm -hmm. on the blood test that they do to see if you're what likelihood your blood is to clot, whatever mm -hmm. that scale was. Mine was perfect. He said, Your blood's perfect. He said, The chances of it clotting is low, but the longer your AFib goes on, because 
the top of your heart is not beating in sync with the bottom. Mm. The chambers aren't going yep. the same. The blood pulls up inside there. Mm. A blood clot starts in your heart. And then of course could go to your brain. And, uh, so I took it and actually it dropped down before he said the beta blocker actually started working and come down to about 80. And, and he said, all right, go. He said, because you come down so quick, I'm not going to admit you, but you got to go see this cardiologist. And of course I went and seen him. And of course he prescribes a beta blocker for me to take. So something from what I understand from the doctor in the research, the AFib that I have is, you know, the le electrical way your heart works. Mm -hmm. There's some type of damaged tissue somewhere. And when it, er, whatever sets it off and there's really no rhyme or reason to it, there are <laughs> certain things in your diet, so on and so forth may contribute to it going off um whatever sets it off it goes on its own and there ain't nothing you can do about it until it stops unless you take this beta blocker to lower the risk of it house happening it blocks calcium going to your heart so on and so forth so that's always in the back of my mind is this going to happen is this going to happen i think back and i remember like five, 10, 15 second intervals where this had happened throughout the years. It happened actually on the second morning of the basic course. I remember I had just drank a cup of coffee and it went like that for life. And I was like, something's up. And no more than I turned around, started taking the tent down, it was gone. But those episodes that come at that time lasted 30, 45 minutes. Uh, so that stays constantly in the back of my head. The doctor says you have no exercise restrictions at all. And my doctor tells me, he said, man, this AFib is not going to kill you. Like do, do what you're going to do. When I first had it, man, I had all kinds of turkey hunts planned out with all kinds of people. And he said, let's, let's monitor it for three months. I got some stuff I want you to, to go do, you know, different echocardiograms, and I had to wear a heart monitor for a certain amount of time that reported directly back to him and this and that. He said, I'd rather you not do that. Don't get out of cell phone service mm -hmm. until we know exactly. So that was a big punch in the gut. Dude. Mm -hmm. And um, so after all that went on, man, I got frustrated. Like, I guess maybe you could call it I got depressed. And I just stopped. Period. Stopped. Stopped. And I started, I would, I'd maybe hit two or three days here and there a week, you know, maybe every two or three months with some fitness, working something, you know, some cardio or something. But other than that, I mean, really and truthfully, you can't even say that's doing anything when you've just teetotally stopped. So that's pretty much what it's been since, <clears throat> since I got diagnosed with that with the AFib mm -hmm. and they ain't ramped it up till I come. When was that corn? So that was 2022. That was March of 2022 is when that was. Yeah. I mean, right before Turkey season. <laughs> and, and I remember I, I, I have, the, I have the heebie jeebies about pills. Anyway, I do not like taking them period. I've had a gallbladder surgery. Of course, the ankle surgery, I took one pain pill the whole time. And the first time it did, man, it looped me out. And I said, no, no more. I, I just don't, I don't like pills at all. Um, I remember from the ER, I hadn't seen the cardiologist yet. And they had gave me a prescription for those beta, beta blockers. And I took the one at the ER and two or three days later, turkey season started. And man, we're working this gobbler. And as we're sitting there, it's got, it starts. Look, 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 look. It starts. Buck was with me, my oldest boy. And I said, son, this turkey don't come in a minute. I'm going to have to walk back to the truck. And he said, for what? I said, I'm going to have to go get one of those pills. Mm -hmm. And um, ever, I started taking it that day and started taking it ever since. And let me tell you, man, when you start taking those, they mess you up, or me anyway, for weeks 
for a week. There was multiple times I started to call and say, Hey man, I think this thing is killing me. Dizzy. I wasn't really never nauseous, just dizzy. I felt like my skin was on fire. Mm. I felt like my head was going to pop. Mm. You just feel like, yeah. Blah. And finally, it's whatever you want to call it, acclimated, my body acclimated to having to take it. And, you know, I've probably had it. It's happened probably three or four times since then, since 22. Um, and it, it's strange. It sort of always happens in the middle of the day. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I had some on a Friday evening, which it, which I'd never had that before. And it was three minutes, three minutes. But also, I, I, I've noticed, too, since I've been working out, that normally my rest and heart rate, because I, I sort of monitored it, mm-hmm. would stay at about 68 to 73. And mm-hmm. the last two weeks... It's been like 45. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know if maybe I need to talk to him and say, Hey dude, we might have to work on these milligrams here. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe now I'm taking too many milligrams mm-hmm, of for, what I'm taking. Yeah. Because it's saying, Hey dude, something, something ain't right with them. Yeah. I mean, that's a, that's a good thought too. Cause yeah. I mean, yeah, you you say, Oh man, my rest and heart rate dropped a lot and that's a good thing, but yeah, you want to be. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good thought. So I don't, mm-hmm. I don't know if that yeah. was it. But that was a big gap in the middle was getting that AFib. I mean, it 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 ticked me off. And what causes it? So according to the doctor and the research I've done, it that's what's odd too. The doctor the doctor tells me the things that I think that I want to hear. And then I read about it. And when you read about it, you're like, holy smokes, this is rough. So I know there's a happy medium in there some somewhere in the medium. Um, forgot where I was going with that. Yeah, I mean it's. Oh yeah, it. I mean it ticked me off. Yeah, it it literally ticked me off. And the contributing factors before, that's what I was getting at. Could be obesity check. Could be alcohol abuse check. Could be hereditary check. Could mm. be heavy nicotine abuse check. Could be caffeine abuse, check. Mm. So I got all five of them boogers. And mm-hmm. then there's some people that got it. They have no idea why they have it. It's prominently more in people age 65 or older. And I'm 47. Mm. Well, you know, ha- what, why or, or how, how, how did you just make a decision though, like pretty much overnight to so drastically change your lifestyle? Like, because, you know, when I called you up and I was like, Hey, corn, will you, would you be interested in coming to work with three seven project? You, you, you said, yeah, I'd be, I'll, I'll be interested in that. Right. And we worked it out. And then it's like, from but from day one, it's like you you've just that's a hard shift, man. Was that just a decision that you made? Like, did you have a pep talk with yourself <laughs> to be like, all right, we're going, we're getting, we, we're going, we're going to change some things. We're getting after it. I mean, it was yeah. just such a, it was that it's huge what you what you've done and how dedicated you've been over the last few months. Yeah, like it's been really inspiring to me to see your dedication yeah. to this new journey in your life, man. Well, you know, not long after I come here, I had a talk with Chili and we sort of talked about like, how do you know when you're really led? So in explaining this, this is all I know. I had been praying to get healthy. I'd been praying, Hey, if this is where I'm going to stay, like this is where I'm going to stay. Like show me. I mean, I've been wearing my knees out doing it. I wasn't necessarily happy where I was at because I felt like I'd done reached as far as I was going to go. And I was constantly searching. Man, I started Bible study there at the place, you know, and, and, and all that was going good. And then a lot of the guys, you know, that I was working with, this ain't down in any of them. It's just wasn't real receptive to any of it. You know, it felt like just everywhere I turned because I spent the majority of my life at work. 
since I've been working, period. So at work, that's where I felt like, you know, I could do the most. You yeah. know what I mean? While I'm there, you know, like I said, 11, 12, sometimes 14 hours a day, six days a week. So I'd been praying just on my knees, like, show me. I, I want to get rid of this AFib. If it's in your will, then we'll do it. And if, if I keep it, then give me something to glorify it. <laughs> and just on and on and on. And when you called, it was a no-brainer. I felt like, I felt like when Elijah had to burn all those mules and all that, I, that I wasn't going back. <laughs> And it's like, I'm here. <laughs> yeah, I remember you sharing that scripture with me when uh, kind of you first came on. And I, could, I couldn't, when you shared that with me, I thought, that's awful. Ra like, that's radical. Yeah, I'm not it, saying I'm a prophet by no means. No, you know but, I mean? but, <laughs> but, but yeah. then like. But now that I now that I've just been watching you over the last few months, you know, fall into your rhythm here and fall into your rhythm in the gym and and this and it's like, son, you did burn, you did you did <laughs> just burn the boats, yeah. man, and mm -hmm. uh, and went straight and went straight into it. Yeah, it's been wild to see, man. I'm just so proud yeah. of you, dude. Yeah, yeah, it was just like we all are. Like appreciate it. It's like um. I just knew there was going to be a series of yeses just, and it's just going to be, it's going to be. Yeah. Well, yeah. And it, it also makes me think too, like from the outside looking in and for, I mean, even you and me and it seems sudden, like you talked about, it's like a, a switch flip, but he just got done describing the years True. and years and you, everything seems, you know, you hear the term overnight success, you hear the thing, radical change, and that is to a degree true, but it's also like, you didn't see the buildup. Yeah. It's like, oh, that dude came out of nowhere. It's like, <laughs> maybe to you, but you didn't see the hours and hours and hours and years and years and years and years that led to that. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. No Everything's thing. gradual until it's sudden. And sometimes when you just see the sudden part, you miss all the gradual that, uh, and really you just discount the work that he did, you know, and, and not intentionally, but, and you, and you, and you may even do that for yourself and think, man, why'd I waste all that time? All that was doing was getting you ready Yeah, for when, for when you actually could say, yeah, yeah, let's do it. That is yeah. very true. Yeah. That is very true. Yeah, and I'm glad Corn shared that story with us because that's what he did. He kind of yep. laid out a, a overview of those years and years and circumstances yeah. and things that happened and things he did and 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 this and that to lead to lead you up to the point yep. that you're at today. And the most sudden part about it all was actually years ago when you went, hold up that was actually the most sudden thing that even happened in the whole process. Years ago, you said, Hmm. And then what, however that came about, <laughs> then you had to walk through it all. Yeah. yeah. Then you get to the point where you're at now and you're still walking through it, but you're like, makes sense. An, an interesting thing about that is, not way back in those years, but Blake had told me once when I was talking to Blake years ago, I said, man, I really want to leave this job. Mm -hmm. You know, I want, I want, I want a different job. And, uh, he's like, well, are you just going to bounce on them? I was like, what do you mean? He said, have you prayed for your replacement? Mm -hmm. You know, that place has helped you out a lot. You know, you've worked there for years. Those are your friends. You ain't just going to leave them with nobody to do your job. And I thought about that. So, I, and I, and I began to do it. And then one day this guy showed up, not a lick 
of experience running heavy equipment. And at the time I was running the concrete crusher at pretty, pretty big responsibility. I mean, you're, you're over millions of dollars of equipment. You have a helper. You have another guy that works with you on a wheel loader, big responsibility, making sure nobody gets their arm chopped off or died. I mean, you got some responsibility and I just knew, I said, this dude's going to replace me. Wasn't verbally told him to, mm-hmm. told him, yep. given to me. Mm-hmm. By the Lord. I just knew. And I told a couple of guys, you know, I'm training him two or three weeks later. He's going to take my place. And I was like, what are you, what, what? He, mm. he can't even climb up in a track. What are you talking <laughs> to? Dude, a year to the date, the Joker took my place and they moved me to a teetotal different position. And what was so unique about it, it wasn't even asked by anybody at that point, can he do it? They just said, hey, we need you to go over here and run the rock quarry part. And so I went over there, and the dude is over there, and he's rocking and rolling and crushing. I mean, just doing it. But in even in that time frame, like you was talking, yep. Shelly, I thought, that's my replacement, but I'm still stuck here. You're still here. I'm still doing something else, like here. I didn't, yeah. I ain't, and it wasn't that I was disgruntled or anything else, you know, and, and, and another unique thing is I had had multiple job offers. I'd had jobs that I had even accepted to take and things would come up, you know, about money or whatever and, and wouldn't end up taking them multiple times, multiple times. And in each one of those times, I was right there with the dudes gossiping. Hey, man, then you know this 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 place ain't got nothing for me no more. This mm-hmm. and they're like, yeah, man, you got so much more to offer. Go do this and bump on this place and this and that. All those times. This time when I said, hey, this is what I'm gonna do, they was like, roll with it, dude. Everyone I talked to, and all those other times I was told beforehand, you're not gonna go there. You're going to stay right here. You're always going to be, you're always going to be here. And dude, I wasn't painting no glorious picture by coming here. I said, I'm going to work with some buddy of mine up in Rome, some buddies of mine up in Rome. They said, well, what is, and I'd say three or seven project, you know, and whether they knew about it or not, you know, I might share them, send them the link to the YouTube channel or the website or something like that. And it would always be, man, you're going to do good. It's going to be awesome. (laughs) It was never, no, you're not going to do it. It was never no gossip about the place I was working at, no backbiting or nothing. And that, that blew me away while that was happening. You know? Yeah. That, that's you. That's a unique reaction. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Different reaction than, than you would expect or anticipate because of what you had experienced in the past. Yeah. Yeah. But that also attests to how I talked in the past too. Yeah. Yeah. And, working through that stuff that took years, Mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. The, the process is always long and arduous. If, if you are seeking, if you are truly seeking, uh, to, to be entrusted with the task and purpose that your Lord has for you, the process to get to the point where you are operating within that purpose is always long and arduous and it is not going to happen on your time on your timeline it's going to be way longer than you ever imagined it being it's going to have way more roadblocks in it and as a matter of fact it's going to have the, it's going to have things along the way that are going to not just look like roadblocks. It's going to look like an insurmountable freaking Impossible. obstacle, an impossibility. I can't get over this obstacle that's between me and where I think I should be going. They're, they're going to pop up. They popped up in my in my path, right? And the crazy thing is, we forget that the reason 
this process is absolutely necessary is because if the Lord gave you everything that he wants you to have all at once right now, it would destroy you. And that's why he does it. That's why it doesn't work that way. It would destroy you. Trust me. I, trust me. I think about this all the time. And so we need to understand every single one of us who are endeavoring to grow into something bigger, to grow into something where we have more influence or responsibility or fulfillment or purpose or whatever it may be, we need to understand that we are probably not, it, we're not ready to receive it until you walk through this long <laughs> freaking nut roll of a journey that breaks you down, scares you to death, makes you feel inadequate. And it's all, it's all about conforming you into the being that you must be in order to receive what is there for you. And so many of you don't ever get or receive what your creator has for you because you quit at some point in that journey. It's a, you make the decision to quit. You quit. You give up, you get tired of it, you just decide to accept whatever circumstance you're living in as, <laughs> well, this is it. This is it. And then you just become the living dead. That's, that's actually when you die. <laughs> you're dead then. So I want to encourage you guys, if you're listening to this podcast and you're somewhere in the midst of that, journey, I want to encourage you that you should be thankful for it. I know that's easier said than done. And I want to remind you that it's probably going to take a lot longer than you think it's going to take. But you got to accept that, Ben. You know the clip from you talking to Nick Bear about the lies you tell yourself? You know the one I'm talking about? Probably not, but well, I think about that a lot, and it's interesting because w w it's more to it than this. But what exactly what you just said is when, or pertaining to that, is when you tell yourself, "This is just who I am." Uh -huh. Period. Oh yeah, yeah. This is it. Yeah, I I I did that the majority of my life, and. To be honest with you, it still slips in. Yep. When we went to the loo and I seen that arch, I told, I said, I ain't in my mind. I ain't supposed to be here. When, when me and you was riding down the A one A and I heard those waves crashing, I was like, do you? I for a split second, I said, man, I'm, I'm, this ain't me. I'm not supposed to be here. Like, how's this? How's this even happening? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I'm supposed start to thinking be the dude you don't, that's supposed to stay. In my hometown, my whole life, you know, and, and yeah, it, it's still to that day slipped in, you know what yeah. I mean? And that's all right too. Yeah. Yeah. I think that happens. That happens to, to all of us. Yeah, for sure. It takes a long time. It takes a long time <laughs> to, to grow into, into the type of person or, or into the, into the, just the place where you actually feel like you belong yeah. doing what you're doing. You know what I mean? That's a whole nother part of the conversation. <laughs> right. You know? Um, yeah, I, I, I relate to that big time. I can't tell you how awkward it was for me when I first started this journey that I'm on in, in going, being flown out to, big city, Salt Lake City or something like that, and sitting down uh to to do an interview with a with a multi billion dollar company and a bunch of cameras in the room and all this stuff. And I'm like, this this feels awkward. 
as crap. Like yeah. I don't, I don't belong here. Yeah. Like what the crap am I doing, man? But it's o it's okay to feel that way. Like the thing that's not okay is would have been for me when those opportunities came down the pipe. It it would have been it would have been not okay if I would have looked at the opportunity and said, "Ah, that ain't me," and then not even went and tried. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So I just it's just a it's just a, a, a the way you overcome that is by way of repetition. Uh, of seizing an opportunity, even if you don't think you are sufficient for the task at hand, and just going and just doing your best, even though you feel awkward, you feel like you don't belong, you feel insufficient, but you show up anyways, and it's just re- it's just repetition, man. Um. I think that continually happens. I, I think that because because the the further you go with this, you're constantly being placed in into these new environments, and so that that's I, I feel that. So I had a friend of mine call me yesterday and talk talk about you guys know I've been I've been kicking around this thought of being governor, and the cra- what y'all don't know is I'm actually kind of serious about that. But what y'all also don't know is when I think about me entering that environment, it makes me sick to my stomach. Like when I think seriously about it, like the the burden that that would be to enter this arena that is just absolutely broken and vicious and ugly, but entering it because I want to serve my country again, because I want to, because of duty. Like, I I actually, I talked to Brooke about this yesterday. I'm like, I almost feel this is a duty to enter, or at least endeavor to enter and and get in a position to wield in positive influence for future generations. I almost see it as a, I see it 100% as a service, no different than serving in the military, but also as a duty. I'm like, why the crap am I just sitting around complaining and letting all the crap just go down the drain? And why am I going to leave? Why am I going to leave the freaking mess that is for the generations that are coming after me, not that I can go and actually change. I may not be able to change anything, but why am I not even going to freaking try? Like, why would I not even try? But then when I seriously consider entering that environment, it's, it is so heavy and so outside the realm of, of, of anything that I think I am sufficient for or capable of or smart enough for that it freaking makes me sick to my stomach man so it's, i i just yeah i think as long as you're as long as you're trusting the lord and you're asking the lord for more more and that more doesn't necessarily look like you moving upward that more that you want from the Lord might look like you descending into a freaking pit. <laughs> but it's going to be uncomfortable. And you're going to say, I don't, fr- I don't belong there. I'm not sufficient for that. That's not who I am. But here's this opportunity. And I, th- I think good can come of it. So I'm going to, Show up. Let the chips fall where they may. I'm going to show up and do my best. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, that's one thing that I've noticed in you is, and I'll truly say for Blake, Chad, Corn, all three of you, I've sat here and watched over the last few months, all three of you say, I want more. Yeah. And it's real interesting. We always talk about when we get on the same page, 
<laughs> what starts to happen. I think we're on the same page about something. And it's uh, a wild journey, man. I, I don't yeah. clarity will come. Yeah, well, hopefully. What do you think about all this biscuit? About can you just, ask me more pointed questions? Well, I just want to give you the opportunity. What I'm doing is I'm giving you the opportunity to comment on any and everything that we've been discussing since you haven't chimed in for a little while, and we value your voice and your opinion. Mm, your tone has changed a lot since. So I I wasn't going to share because I just feel like a Debbie Downer. Um, but I like I heard Cornbread's story with the AFib and it, that's a whole next level of what I'm about to compare to but it also like made me think is like I've had this this season for me starting probably in like November my anxiety is just like shot through the roof and I've had such a good two years and I'm like what is going on like why I've been doing everything right I, I don't know why, like, panic attacks are starting to come back. I feel like I'm failing. This is not going well. And I just kind of feel like my body and my mind are not working with me. And it continued to get worse. And then I was at the gym the day after Christmas, and I went to pick the bar up, and I felt something change in my back. And I was like, oh, crud. Then I actually went over to Chad laying on the floor. I think you were in there. Yeah. And I, I started, tears started coming out of my eyes. And I was like, I think I really messed up my back. And he laughed at me. He just started laughing. And I, I, I didn't think I was serious. And fast forward, I do have a couple bulging discs. I'm getting better. But here I was struggling with the panic and anxiety. Well, my coping mechanism for that is exercise. That's how I cope. That's how I keep myself regulated. And all of a sudden, I can't I can't bend over. Like I can't move my back. Like I like Chad had to do everything for me. I couldn't lift anything. Um, I could barely stand up for the first few days. Tied and your shoes for you. I couldn't I couldn't do anything, much less when I started feeling anxious, go out on a run and run from it. You know what I mean? Um all that I'm going to tie back in to say, like, I kind of related to some of the things. I don't remember exactly what you said, but you still are carrying that AFib with you. Like, it might not go away. Right. And you've, like, you're, you are going to continue to push forward without focusing on that, but also being smart and acknowledging it. Um. I don't know. I don't know if that makes much sense, but I just thought it was cool because that, that's next. That's life threatening. It could be. I mean, yeah, I'm not, I'm not yeah. trying to be dismal, right? but it's just different. Like you choosing to exercise and choosing to do things and like you are carrying that around with you and like you've got to learn to be OK with that. And like in this season of my life, I've got to learn to be OK with carrying around some extra anxiety, maybe a few panic attacks here and there, and back pain. And, like, that's all new to me. And to hear what you're talking about, I'm like, if Corin can do that, if Corin can carry around his heart, like, getting off rhythm, I can carry around some back pain. So, yeah. yeah that was Absolutely. Cool. Well, from from what the doctors explained and everything, I, I've read that AFib doesn't get any better. It don't go away because it's damaged to your heart. It only progressively gets worse. And like the next, one of the next steps, if the medication was to stop working, they go in there somehow and whatever tissue is damaged or what they do, some type of freezing thing that kills that tissue to try to eliminate it, those receptors going off kill. So it's like I said, if, if, if God don't want me to have it, I won't have it when he don't want me to. But if he wants me to, we got to glorify his name. And if I can use the AFib for somebody else that's got it, that's that's what I'm going to do. Yeah. Yeah. That's the reality, isn't it? It's like those things might not get taken away. And that's that's kind of where I'm at with 
my anxiety and just the the panic and stuff is just like, okay, this might be a burden that like I'm meant to carry for some reason. And like it, it kind of ties into what Chad was saying about never giving up and continuing to fight. It's like, I will continue to fight. Like you're continuing to pray for him to remove that if it's his will. Yeah. But also there's a part that's like accepting, like you're saying like, okay, if, if this is going to be a thing or if like, I'm going to have back trouble, like if that's going to be part of my life, like learning to just be like, all right, how, how, like you're saying, how can we make the best of this? Yeah. That's hard for me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I can relate to the anxiety because when I quit drinking, I didn't know what to do with myself. Yeah. And it, I mean, it drove me absolutely nuts. Mm -hmm. Like absolutely drove me nuts. And that, that was one reason too, that I started jogging a little bit and working out. There was just so many things. And as I think other things come into mind, but yeah, I can totally relate what I sat there, man. And, and just ate ice cream left and right. The sugar craving was so high, but I'd sat for so long of my life working then coming home and drinking, you know, sitting and drinking when the drinking was gone, I didn't know what to do. I didn't have a clue what to do, you know? Yep. And the Lord gave me plenty to do. This, this baby, you bringing, you bringing that up and tying that in reminds me of a, of a scripture in, um, I think this is second Corinthians verse 12. And, uh, it's, uh, Paul is written by inspiration of the Holy spirit to keep me from becoming conceited because of these surpassingly great revelations. There was given to me a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me. Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you for my power is made perfect in your weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weakness so that Christ's power may rest upon me. So in Cornbread talking about, well, if this, if this thorn in my, my flesh, if this thing that, that I have to deal with is, uh, if it's not, if it's not going to be taken away, you hear corn talking about, well, using it mm -hmm. to glorify God, well, what and when people are saying, what do you mean by that? How can you take a bad situation? How can you take a health problem that's impacting you, that's uh, that's 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 debilitating, that's taken away from your physical abilities, and how can you take? How can you say that can be used to to glorify the Lord? Well, Paul gives us the answer right here in Second Corinthians. My grace, this is Jesus Christ, says to back to Paul in response to his prayer, my grace is sufficient for you. In other words, rely on my grace and my grace alone. That is sufficient for you. All right. For my power is made perfect in weakness. That's the way Christ works. He actually, Christ Jesus overcame the world, death, hell, and the grave by way of weakness and submission, by way of allowing himself to be beaten, tormented, mocked, and eventually nailed to a cross, just humiliated and killed un completely without justification. And <laughs> And he did that. He overcame the world, death, hell, and the grave in what we perceive as weakness. And then Paul goes on to say, again, therefore I will boast more gladly about my weakness. Man, think about that. Boasting in your weakness. Think about that, man. Get that one through your head. What would that look like? Boasting in your weakness. In other words, talking talking about if i being real i am weak i am fallible i have this all this crap wrong with me for whatever reason but guess what there is one that sustains me that i rely upon every single day christ power rests on me 
and sustains me in spite of my prevalent weakness that I am not afraid to admit. Hmm. That That's an interesting balance that like I've been trying to strike of you don't want to be that person that constantly talks about like like I, I didn't even want to talk about my back injury on the podcast because I was like, man, nobody wants to hear about. Well, you said, is it valuable? Do you say that now? Maybe, <laughs> but but like what you're saying, Boo. There's there's got to be a balance, and I know there's not like a manual for this of like like what you're going through. Corn is scary. Like that's got to be scary at times, and like when I look forward. Sometimes I'm a little nervous. And so it does, it is helpful to talk about it and it is helpful to share with community. And I think there is a way, and I think you did a great job framing it in what you shared in a positive way. But then there also should be times when we're allowed to break down and like be like, wow, this, this kind of sucks a little bit, you know? Like I feel, I feel scared and I feel like I'm in pain and I'm frustrated. And then, I don't know. I've, I've struggled, boo, like with you're my person. And even like I've been trying to kind of monitor, like, how much do I talk about my struggle and how much do I share even with my friends? Like, am I talking about it too much? Am I so like boasting in your weakness is like, how do you like, how can you communicate it more often? But not just be a womp womp, you know what I mean? Does that yeah, not sense? not for the sake of complaining. Well, yeah. yeah. I think, I, I mean, I know that the, the phrase is boasting in your weakness, but I don't even think that's really what, like, it's asking you to do to say, hey, look at my, it's, it's, it's boasting in Christ's strength. Keeping the focus on that. I mean, yeah, like you're you're not boasting in your weakness. You're boasting in <laughs> what's covered that up, essentially. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, and when so the weakness is there to be covered up. Um, but like boasting in your weakness would basically be just boasting in your weakness. <laughs> I don't think that's what that's saying. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. It's it's it's. It's not covering uh, it's not covering up your weakness. It's just it, it's 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 exposing your weakness to anybody who who wants to ask you yeah. or, or 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 see it and saying in spite of this I'm sustained by this the 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 spirit the holy spirit of Christ. I love that. I'm glad we had that conversation. Is anybody still watching this show, baby? Yeah, we have 487 people on Thank here. you guys for joining us. Now you know a little bit more about cornbread. I've been waiting on that. <sighs> yeah. Didn't want to force it, but that's cool. Yeah, that was cool. I want to read something here to you guys. And Chili, will you please explain this, what this means to the people? <laughs> All right, after I'm done reading it. <laughs> Many of you guys have probably never heard this but is one of the most beautiful things, in my opinion, that's ever been penned by mankind. Okay, so I want Chili to give us a little breakdown on this. What the heck, man? Uh, if, listeners, if you know what this is that I'm reading, while I'm reading it, drop it in the comment and let us know if you know what this is. Because I don't think... I don't think... I was taught this in school. I don't know if you guys were taught this in school or not. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, and they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, that to secure these rights... Governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. That whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, it is the right of the people 
to alter or abolish it and to institute new government, laying its foundations on such principles and organizing its powers in such form as to them shall seem most likely to affect their safety and happiness. Prudence indeed will dictate that governments long established should not be changed for light and transient causes. And accordingly, all experience hath shown that mankind are more disposed to suffer while evils are sufferable than to right themselves by abolishing the forms to which they are accustomed. But when a long train of abuses and usurpations pursuing invariably the same object evidences a design to reduce them under absolute despotism, it is their right, it is their duty to throw off such government and to provide new guards for their future security. Does anybody know what that was? Anybody on YouTube, do you know what that was? Yeah, they're saying, some are saying Bill of Rights, Declaration of Independence, Bill Constitution. Of uh, Declaration of it. Independence. Okay, I had preamble and Abraham Lincoln too. This is the declaration, the unanimous declaration of the 13 United States of America. Do you know who wrote this? Chili, you know who wrote this? TJ. Thomas Jefferson. Hey, I was going to guess that too. Thomas Jefferson penned this document. And it went through the, um, the Continental Congress and they picked it apart and boiled it down to what it is. But it is a absolutely magnificent writing. Would you agree with that, oh, Chili? Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. to think this man sat down and wrote this. I couldn't write something like this, man. Yeah. But there, we don't know what this... Why have we forgotten what was written here? Because this is... What are you doing, baby? I'm just standing up. Oh, okay. <laughs> this is actually describing who we are today. Yep. It's describing who we are today. Well, it's it's who we were then, it's who we've been in between, and it's who we are now. Yes. And it's who we're going to be. When it looks good, when it looks bad, when you feel more free, when you feel less free. He didn't write that for when things got bad. He wrote that so they wouldn't get bad. A couple of things that stood out to me is uh, we talk about what is the purpose of government. Well, if anybody's confused about what the purpose of government is, it's actually right here in the Declaration of Independence. Uh, the purpose of government is to secure our rights of life, liberty, and happiness says it right here. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness that to secure these rights, governments have been instituted among, among men, deriving their powers from the consent of the governed. So you want to know what the purpose of government is? Is to preserve our rights of life, liberty, and happiness. Does the federal government do that for us? Are they doing that for us right now? Or, or maybe they operating a little outside of their, their purpose? Is anything that the federal government is doing, doing right now, is it in the interest of your life, your liberty, or your happiness? I, I personally can't think of a single thing that the federal government does for me directly. All they do is take away 
from my life, my liberty, and my pursuit of happiness. And it's odd because government is instituted for the purpose of securing these rights for you and I. So what the crap, man? Well, and to me, the question becomes, where does government receive its authority? And first off, you have to say, where where do where do people receive their rights well that's natural rights that's given by the creator endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights correct so then what is government well it's made up of people who derive their power from their creator and but Jefferson goes a little bit further and says they received their from the consent of the governed. Yep. Who received their rights from the creator. Yep. Other Interesting thing, how that works. It is. Other things that stood out to me. That whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, in other words, becomes destructive, in other words, detracts from the stated purpose of government, it is the right of the people to alter or abolish it and to institute a new government. That was interesting to me. I would say our government has become destructive to these ends. And it is actually our right, and he goes on later to say, Actually, our duty to alter or abolish it. Another big one that stood out to me. Experience has shown that mankind are more disposed to suffer while the evils are sufferable than to right themselves by abolishing the forms to which they are accustomed. That is us right now. God. That is us right now. That's a heck of a sentence. Yeah, it is. What does that mean to you, Chili? You want me to read it again? Yeah, go ahead. All right. Let me find it. <laughs> Mankind are more disposed to suffer while evils are sufferable than to right themselves by abolishing the forms to which they are accustomed. He's talking about human nature. That that's I was like, I see people do this with food. Yeah. Like I see people do this with like, I mean, we yeah, yeah, not just government. So it's not surprising that we're just like, oh, we're comfortable. Yeah. We don't want to, we don't want to do anything. Just leave us be. Yeah. And t he's talking about the about human nature and he's and he's showing you the confines that that human nature is bound within. He's not telling you where that point is that evil becomes un unsufferable, but he's telling you there is that point. Yeah. And he's telling you, you will put up with it until that point. But everybody. That's us right you, now. You will. That's what he's telling you. Like you It is will. just your nature. But everybody's point is different. <laughs> Y'all have hit that point. We have hit that point. But most of these other folks that are very comfortable with the lifestyle that that our government has created, which is a lot of people, and they did that on purpose, are not to that point. It was the same way though when Jefferson wrote this document. Yeah. There there were there were plenty of people here in the continental United States. Well it wasn't the United States until after this document was that wanted to stay in Britain. That yeah. That had not reached the point where yeah. they said this is just I, I I would rather just live under these sufferable conditions mm -hmm. than to put in the work to actually abolish it and change the form which there's there's what the, that's what he's saying you know what he's saying he's saying you're looking for more numbers you're looking for why does this person not reach the point that i have because it's in their nature but since you've reached the point that's in your nature and it's your duty to do something about it yeah. So instead of sitting there saying, well, why aren't more people agreeing with this? We need more people to agree with this. Who are you to say you need more people? Mm. What if you just needed to do something? 
I mean, yeah, I think that's the truth. Yeah. If you were waiting on enough people, you What's could enough? probably wait for forever. What's yeah. enough? Yeah. I mean, no, there's not. I don't think it would ever be a comfortable thing. Even if you thought you had ha however many people, it would never be a comfortable thing that you would be embarking on. So is the problem not having enough people or is it the problem of the people who have recognized it shirking their responsibility and duty? Yep. Uh, that's a that's that's a good point, Chili. And, and I just as I read through the the autobi or the biography of Thomas Jefferson and also Washington, and and I read through the chronicles of um, the the meetings of the Continental Congress, and what I realize is there were plenty of people, even within the Continental Congress, that did not agree that it was time to declare independence. Mm -hmm. They just said, I hadn't got bad enough yet. Let's try to negotiate. Let's try to negotiate. I hadn't got bad enough yet. Jefferson was dealing with the same crap. Jefferson, John Adams, George Washington, Benjamin Franklin. They were all dealing with the same situation we're dealing with right now. And you don't negotiate with despots. Yeah, exactly. There's no negotiation. They tried prior to this Declaration of Independence being published publicly. They sent many, many letters to the King of England to try to negotiate. And the king just looks at them like they're full, like they're a fool. Do you under, you guys understand that we are living right now under a form of quasi monarchy? Well, it makes you say monarchy. That's what it is. What like explain someone explain Oligarchy. that to me? Yeah, it's a it's a small it's a very small percentage of the population at the top who yep. control it's everything. An oligarchy. Yeah, yeah, that's what it is. I mean, it it's just not official. But it doesn't need to be official. You know, I mean, think about why would a despot need to be official? They just have the power. Yeah, they don't, yeah. Need, they don't need to be. It would actually be stupid for them to make it official because then it could be more I easily think, targeted. I think that's been learned throughout the course of history. <laughs> um, yeah, and, and, and why you can't negotiate with, with that is it, it goes back to human nature that Thomas Jefferson was talking about. The, the the evil that you will that, that that has been deemed sufferable they're aware of that yeah they are aware of that yeah they're very aware they're keenly aware more aware than you are of how tolerable it is to you and that is why they move so slow slowly yeah because they're aware of this they move so slowly they acclimate you to what is sufferable. Yeah, the 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 people the 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 nameless faceless people that you, that everyone bemoans and and hates, they know what you just read far better <laughs> than you and I do. Far better. Yep. So here's also where we are now. It's another thing that stood out to me. But when a long train of abuses and usurpations pursuing invari invariably the same object evidences a design to reduce them, us, under absolute despotism. This is where we are now. We are in the midst of a long train of abuses. Abuse. What are you talking about abuses? Well, well how, how about the fact that you literally work from January to August for free to pay your government? You work from January to August to pay your taxes. How about crap like the freaking Patriot Act? Where they can serve the every 
bit of information about your life can be placed under the surveillance of your government. It's it's it's, it's an it's literally a endless a endless list of abuses and usurpations and usurpation man every word every word was carefully crafted you can see the level of attention to detail usurpations how is the patriot act passed how is taxes the way it is it was usurped from you what does that mean taken and you let it happen yep Mm. so usurpations it tells you you let it happen. That's part well, of the definition. Well, no, it was it was taken from you. Okay. The, the, this it it was the state of affairs is not your right as a human being given to you by God, but it was taken from you. Mm-hmm. And we did. I mean, and we have. Yes, we have let it. Do y'all think slowly the folks that are leading this oligarchy are nervous? Or do you think they're like, meh, they're, they're too, there's no way that they'll ever, like, do you know what I mean? Do you think that, like, they have plans and, like, have things in place to, like, prevent, I don't know, do you think they stay up at night, like, worrying about the country turning on them? Or it's just their... No, I think they know it will. What? Uh, well, I, I mean, this this definitely goes into the more spiritual battle that that this is i don't think they sit up at night and worry about the country turning on them they they don't really know or care about that but it's it's to me it's a battle being waged far beyond that um so far beyond that any revolution in a in a country on some point in time in the long annals of history no matter the bloodshed or suffering will seem insignificant compared to the actual battle that is taking place. And I think when you say they, um, I think there's participants that there's willing participants and there's conscious participants and unconscious participants and the unconscious participants probably don't, they don't, it's, Trying to think, trying to figure out what they think is is pointless. But the conscious participants understand that they will lose, yet they w- will do it anyway. Mm-hmm. What I don't understand is what is the investment like? You guys talk about, and I see what y'all are saying. It is very clear to me about the slow boil, right? Yep. But that takes generations. Yep. So. What does further evidence that it's a plan beyond right. an individual or group of individuals' yeah. own because, selfish desires right. within the confines of Earth? It's a greater exactly three generations back, folks that started the slow boil. They're never going to see the results. I mean, yeah, yeah, exactly. I it's hard for me to fathom how a human could want the demise of a country and the demise of a people so much if they don't get to witness it. It's like, well, well people adjust adjust to be comfortable. It the speaking of the train, it reminded me. I read a book. It's called How to Kill Seven Million People, and it was about when Hitler was shipping the Jews on trains right by people's houses, and they would hear the the people inside the train screaming and crying and this. And sooner or later, as these trains just continued on, they didn't hear the people in there anymore. And there wasn't no less people. The trains weren't empty. Mm. They still knew what was going on, but they were comfortable in their house. They didn't dig into what's going on. They didn't dig into any of it. They become comfortable Mm. with that going on right beside them. So you think about first our rights being protected. That's being given to us, right? And the government makes laws to help. Do preserve. not stomp on my law, my rights, and yep. me not stomp on yours. But they also devised a way to protect their self <laughs> with those laws. Mm. And nobody wants to get thrown in the hoose cow. <laughs> so, so it's comfortable just to listen to the train because I get to go to sleep tonight. Yeah. 
And in the morning, I get to get up and shove protein down my throat. <laughs> yeah. You see what I'm and saying? And veg out on social media and right. buy your new car. Right. And yeah. And so you seen like, so what I may not put up with, people's children may put up with it yeah. because they're associated with different things, whatever universities they go to. And, the, you know, times progress. They may put up, it's okay to, for a lot of these things that are going on now that mm -hmm. the government has allowed and we're not okay with vice versa. And people, that, oh, sorry, go, go ahead. ahead. Just people adapt to comfortability. You well, can, it wouldn't yeah. be comfortable for me for a train to be coming by my house with people screaming. Like I got to figure out what in the world is going on there. But for whatever reason, way back then, wherever that was, I can't remember exactly where it was. Then people were comfortable with it for a slight amount of time, enough to just act like it wasn't even going on. Mm -hmm. And what you're saying about the generations corn is so like, I, I can see that right now. Like you're saying, like each generation is more comfortable and more accepting of the government encroachment on mm -hmm. our rights. And it's totally is there. I mean, yeah, absolutely. So, We'll wrap this little segment up here. This long train of abuses, evidence is a design to reduce us, them, or us under absolute despotism. Despotism is the, the exercise of absolute power, especially in a cruel or oppressive way. That's the goal. This is a literal battle like Chili highlighted earlier, Brooke asked the question, what's the, why are these people doing this? It's, it takes so long. They don't get to see the fruits of it, but it just continues on that trajectory. Why is this happening? Because this is a literal battle between good and evil. Did you see the word? We talked about the detailed, detailed words. You see the word he used? Design. Which design. Yeah. Evidence is a design to reduce them under absolute despotism. Yes, he was a conspiracy theorist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is a literal... That's Thomas Jefferson in 1776 saying designed. Yep. Wait, can you elaborate on that a little bit, Chili? Yeah, I mean, all, all that what we're talking about, we're saying it's orchestrated, it's designed, it's not a product of chance. It's not by accident. It's not by accident. He was saying the same thing. Yeah. My mind, when you say, and boo, I will make this quick. When you say not by accident, is human nature changing things over time because of the way we're wired an accident? Does that make sense? Yes. Like as time goes on, we will continue. If there is more power available, we will take it and it will grow and we will push. Like you're saying it's more than that. It's not just like an accidental escalation of people making really dumb decisions. It was like back then someone said, here's where we want to be by 2070. Right. Like we want, we want the United States and the people to look like this. Well, the question is, the question is on whether it's an accident or design. The question is what would be the driving force? Uh, yeah. The question is how aware are the individuals who are being used and manipulated? How aware are they of the design? Well, that's the question to me. Well, what is their awareness of the design? Well, it doesn't matter the, 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 the pawns used to execute the plan, their awareness. It matters the awareness of what is the driving force? Is the driving force an accident? The, the only explanation, the driving force, is the, is the thing that we use the word to describe as evil. That's the only explanation. Yeah. The evil exists as a real force. It's not accidental. That is in play, and it is not accidental. You're exactly right. And to wrap it up, it is our duty, it is our right and our duty to throw off such government and provide new guards for our future security. You guys remember when we started out this conversation and I talked about potentially endeavoring to get into a position where I could potentially be a part of this fight for good and how I felt like it is my literal duty 
Like there's a difference between feel between looking at something as duty hmm. and looking at something as like, yeah, that seems like a pretty fun thing to go do. Like when when you when you Agreed. when you look at something as a duty, it is burdensome. It's 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 so it, it's so outside of the realm of your desire. Like the actual task of it. It is our duty. So I wanted to share that with y'all. Because I don't know that they're you know, it's it's unbelievable that they'll make you read the freaking Lord of the Flies in high school. Yeah. But they don't want you to know what the meaning of the Declaration of Independence is. You know, it, it, it is. It, I have to go back to what you just said. It's burdensome. But you know what the interesting part about that is? <laughs> you say it's burdensome, and then if you actually break it down, especially when you have asked for more responsibility. You've asked for more to be given to you. And then something is presented with you like that that would be perceived maybe as a burden. Hmm. But then, once again, what does Scripture say? A burden is light. My yoke is easy. It's not heavy. Yeah. It's kind of interesting. I just haven't got there yet. <laughs> yeah. I just haven't got there yet. Yeah. It may would have been to who you were. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we'll see where this goes. <laughs> He's not convinced yet. Anymore. Oh, I'm not either. Uh, yeah, I'm not convinced yet either. I'm just talking about the nature of how anything like that's got to work. It's very similar to Corn's story. It's yeah. all. Yeah. All in all, I want to wrap this podcast up with sharing with you guys the fact that I have really been battling against absolute despair oh. over the last couple of days. Uh, I don't care if you think this is stupid or not, but my favorite goat is sick again. And, you know, one thing about living on, you know, kind of a little farm like we have is you kind of have these very often reminders of sickness and death and things decaying and dying. It's like, if you got animals, man, there's always something dying or there's always something sick. It's all constantly. And I'm looking at this dang goat, man. I love this goat. I'm looking at this goat suffering. His face is drooping down, you know, and it's struggling sick. I'm like, man, I am so sick of this world where everything it's just in a constant state of decay and just on marching toward death. I'm just so, I just, I just get, I get, I just get almost like consumed by it. And so obviously I turn to the Lord and I pray just, Lord, help me overcome this feeling of despair and refocus my attention on the fact that we have been redeemed. We've been redeemed from that despair by way of your death on the cross, right? R help me focus on the eternal life that I have with you. Help me focus on the fact that you overcame death for us. You overcame this decay for us. We're so disconnected from the fact that we're, we are all marching toward death. Uh, our bodies are just literally right now, second by second, just decaying. And so I've been having a battle against this the last day or two. Biscuit can attest to that. It's interesting to me 
when we talk about the fact that everything is, it's the curse. It's the curse that was put on the earth when the first man and woman decided to rebel against God. We are living under a curse. It's funny to me how when we look at the laws of science, they actually explain the curse. I've been very interested in the second law of thermodynamics, the law of entropy. It explains the curse that we're all living under. The law of entropy basically says in layman's term, as one goes forward in time, the net entropy or the degree of disorder of any isolated or closed system will always increase. So in order, in other words, in a closed system, as time marches forward, the everything is tending to disorder. Everything is moving in the direction of disorder, decay, cancer, death, sickness, natural disaster. It's, a, it's literally a law of science that explains the curse on the earth. This is a close, we, we are, we, we, and I think about this closed system too, and I'm like, when did this world that we are on here, when did it become a closed system? In the garden, right? right. It became a closed system when man rebelled against God and God left man to his own devices the earth and then from that point forward it became an environment that was marching forward toward disorder but i have to i need to focus on the fact that we still experience this physical life in this closed system, but because of Christ, there is now this new outside input that is the Holy Spirit that is redeeming us. And although we're marching forward toward death and sickness and disorder in the physical realm, we have been filled with the Holy Spirit. And so... Spiritually, we are no longer under the curse that is on the earth. But it's hard to keep sight of that when you actually are seeing something that you love or you are attached to suffering. So that's what I'm praying for right now for myself. You're, you're praying for what? Just that I focus on that I focus on Christ. But I, like I, when I called you this morning, we were talking about this. I think it's kind of similar to the conversation earlier. Like a lot of people don't want to experience the grief, and so they begin to pray. And I don't think God's going to take the grief from you. You know, it's just it's just something you have to. I'm not speaking for you, but I guess I'm speaking for myself. It's like something you have to move through. You know? the, well, the 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 gr the grief is is great. It's 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 not great. Well, it's literally that is the part. The grief is the part that's making me desire to refocus my mind on Christ. It li it it literally goes back to the verse we yeah. quoted earlier. In your weakness, yeah, absolutely goes right back to it. I yep. see what you're saying. So you're yeah. not praying for him to take the grief away or the uncomfortable feelings. You're just praying for him to focus you more on him. Yeah. I, yeah. It, it's, it's more along the lines of like, don't succumb to despair. Cause I think grief is, mm. is a natural thing that focuses you back on Christ. Mm -hmm. 
despair is shifting your focus completely to the fact that there is no hope for you or I or any one of us in this physical world. Yeah. So I just want to share that with y'all. Boy, we've covered a lot of ground on this uh, podcast here. Holy smokes. How long is this podcast? Almost, it's long. Almost two hours. Good night. Does YouTube have anything, boo-boo? Any, any good questions or super chats we need to talk about or anything like that? Yeah, I can run through the super chats. Um, Artie Rowe gave $10. He said, it's the Cloward and the Piven strategy. Um, Thank you, Artie. Dano, not in the lion's den, gave $17.76. Dano, thank you, man. He said, Jesus Christ, 2024, he is the only way. Eric Logan gave $10. He did a heart. Rich Mountains gave $50. He said, please, please pray for the missing Navy SEALs and their families. Thank you and God bless. Thank you, Rich. Jacob Aberwall gave uh, $10. Thank you for everything your team has done. God bless you. Thank you, Jacob. Thank you, Jacob. Paul Lee gave $5, his first super chat. Um, Steve Norris gave $10, his first. Matt gave $2 (laughs) when you were being a butthole to me. Steve, Matt. He said, thoughts on national divorce. Um, Travis Van S. gave $20. Here in Northwest IA is Iowa. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Two feet of snow, negative 40 degrees, built tough. Thank you, Travis. I see you getting after it, man. Blake Wright gave $2 his first super chat. <laughs> Matt gave $2. Little Virgie gave nineteen ninety nine. Southern Maryland's affordable hauling has me up early where the eagles fly. Little Virgie. And that's it. And I, I want to talk about our race, too, but do you have any? Do you want? Yes, you definitely need to mention that. We're yeah. getting close. We are getting close. And we're actually like, I think there's a chance we might fill up. I didn't think that was possible, but now I'm starting to think that like it is possible. Dang. Yeah. So February 10th, 8 a.m. Um, Sloppy Floyd State Park registrations on ultra sign up. It's called three of seven trail race, but it's a four mile loop, four, six, eight hour. Um, if you can hike four miles, you can be a part of this race. Yep. And it's more of a community thing for us. We're going to have food, food trucks, coffee trucks. First form is going to be out there. Hoist is going to be out there. Salty Bridges is going to be out there. We're going to have a lot of our people are going to be out there. Um, So it'll just be a fun time to get together. And no, we don't care if it's cold. (laughs) We will continue to race anyway. It was cold as mess. What was that, two years ago in November? Yeah. Yeah, year and a half. It was. Yeah, it was in the 20s. Yeah, that's another thing Thomas Jefferson said. He said everybody should work out for a minimum of two hours a day, and you shouldn't pay no mind to what the weather is. Yeah. That's what he said. Yeah. So, yeah, rain, shine, whatever. I don't care. It's it's happening. You should sign up. Um, Brett Childers said, I love y'all, and he just did a $20 super chat. Grief, Brett. Thank you, Brett. Brett, I'll never forget you sitting on the side of the Altima Hall River with a migraine headache and <laughs> – I'll never forget dropping your ribeye steak in the sand and then washing it off with some bottled water and giving it to you, but not telling you about it. <laughs> and then sitting there and watching you eat it saying, dang, that's a bunch of sand in this steak. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that, buddy. Oh, uh, I will. Did you mention what day registration closes? Uh, I think I said it for three days before. So okay. to be uh, safe. Oh, you slackers. I know there's a bunch of people sitting there waiting. Well, they better not wait because I'm telling you, I think it might fill up. I'm telling you, there's people sitting there waiting. I know how you are. You're sitting there waiting saying, I'll do it February 1st or I'll do it February 2nd. You may, it may fill up and also you may forget about it. Yeah. Think about it. To be safe, I think February 6th will probably be the last day. Okay. You know, people have yeah. a hard time committing to things and uh, committing to whatever it is, whether it's a race or a business or um, some new habit. They don't want to commit to it, right? And and that's why y'all never accomplish anything. A lot of y'all, no kidding. That's why you never accomplish anything because you you won't say, I, I'm going to do this big thing a month from now, a year from now, whatever it is, you won't commit to it. You have to. If you want to do something big, you have to be willing to commit to doing that thing like a year in advance. 
you got to be willing to do it. That's just what it takes to let y'all know. And this episode was brought to you by our partner at Barbell, too. Yep. Chili, you got a one-mile-out hat on? Yeah, it's custom. That's custom. That's custom. You see that patch right there? Dang, they hooked you up, man. One mile out. Dang. You guys know, man, Barbell have been uh, really, really awesome partners for us here at 307 Project. If you if you haven't caught on yet, uh, the people that we partner with, Barbell, Hoist, First Form, we actually know these people. Like they don't just hit us up and say, "Hey, will you will you talk about us on the pot?" No, like we actually know them. We use the products. Used it this morning. Yeah, CrossFit. And so, um, Barbell, they're awesome people. They got everything that you need from gym shorts to. Running shorts to running pants to blue jeans, c- blue jeans, collared shirts to one mile out apparel, one mile out apparel. Uh, if any of you guys have watched the one mile out documentary here on YouTube, it was because our our partners paid for that for you guys. Barbell and Hoist paid for that for you guys. They sent Drake out, paid for the whole project for you guys. So. So if, if, if you got anything out of that, go get you something from them. Barbellapparel.com. You won't be disappointed. Awesome people with an awesome product. It's going to help you be better at the things you like to do. Be more comfortable, that's for dang sure. And Why are you working your, out two I hours? Would, I and wouldn't make, wear stinking blue jeans for years until they sent me a pair of jeans. I love And them. now I can actually wear jeans again. Their jeans make everybody's butt look really good, too. <laughs> I feel like they have somebody hired in there <laughs> that like puts jeans on a mannequin and moves the pockets around. And they're like, no, a little bit to the left. No. A little. And then when they get them just right, where it makes someone's bum look perfect, that's when they like, okay, we're ready. Oh, and in this, uh, in, in this, uh, cold weather too, man, those joggers, those lightweight joggers, that's what I ran the Cocodona in when it got cold. We got up in them high elevations. Get you a pair of them, man. They're they're good to run in, especially in this cold weather. Did you have them on this morning at CrossFit? I did. What'd you have? He had the barbell shorts on. Shorts, yeah. yeah. So he doesn't. Wear it ain't pants. quite cold enough for me to put them ultralight joggers on yet. It's got to be like zero. Yeah, ten degrees isn't cold enough. Well, it was. Uh, well, uh, if we would have ran outside this morning, I would have wore those ultralight joggers. Yeah. But we were in the gym, so the daggone cold air wasn't hit me in my legs, pissing me off. He was cold at Cocodona when it was 70. Good night, dude. <laughs> I got so cold on that race. Yeah. Gosh, dog. Thank you guys for tuning in. We love you. Enough said.